All right, I'll just give everyone a minute to kind of funnel in here and then we can get started. Um, Hello everyone and thank you for joining us for today's webinar. My name is Quinton Moorhead. I'm the National Account Manager of Top Crop Manager in Potatoes in Canada. I'm joined today by Shane Duick, National Leader, Client Account and Bookkeeping Services with MNP. Shane Duick is MNP's National Leader, Client Accounting and Bookkeeping Services. He works with small to medium sized owner managed businesses delivering customized advice and solutions to help them achieve their business goals. Based in Saskatoon, Shane has a passion for bringing efficiencies to business processes to assist owners with getting the most out of their time and resources. Today, he'll be talking about how to know if cloud accounting and bookkeeping is right for your farm, the benefits, and the steps to move into the cloud. Thanks to MMP for sponsoring our session today. MMP is a leading national accounting, tax, and business consulting firm for Canada's agriculture industry. They have invested more time and resources into understanding agriculture than any other firm, with more than 18,000 agriculture clients and a team of more than 600 agriculture specialists. MMP delivers a diverse suite of services to protect farmers and maximize results. Uh, this webinar is being recorded and will be made available to all attendees and registrants approximately 24 hours after our live broadcast. Session is scheduled to run for approximately 30 minutes to an hour. Shane will speak for about 30 minutes and following the presentation, we'll open the floor to questions. Uh, if you have any questions throughout the presentation, please type them into the questions tab. Uh, without further ado, I'll turn things over to Shane. Awesome, thanks Quentin and good morning everybody. Thank you for joining us this morning. So today we're gonna to talk about cloud accounting and bookkeeping. Uh, really what is it, but also is it right for your farm and, and what that stuff looks like. So um, Quentin, you've given uh, a fairly good intro and in, in what that stuff looks like for for who I am and what that is. So uh, I do lead our client accounting and bookkeeping services or, or really the cloud accounting um, department for really for MNP in terms of what that looks like strategically and helping guide what that is. We refer to that as ease uh, in the market is, is what we would call it. But um, yeah, as, as Quentin said, I'm based in Saskatoon. I grew up in a small community just north of half an hour north of here called Hague, Saskatchewan in, in a small, small farming community. Um, my parents own the grocery store, so I didn't grow up on the farm, but I grew up with a lot of farmers and a lot of farm kids and, and doing that stuff and really understanding how important they are within the community and what that stuff looks like. And, and some of the problems that we would face would just naturally, uh, I guess, bleed into our business as we were running a grocery store and, and seeing them all the time on a daily basis or with things around seeding or harvest and what that stuff looks like or even everything in between uh, as what's happening as you got to know people in your community better. So really, we're going to talk about a lot of things, but I think that the first place to start is let's just get a feel for the room and what this looks like. So I, I think that we're going to start off with some polls and really start talking about how do you guys feel at tax time? What is that? Are you are you prepared? Do you get your stuff in early? Are you usually right on time with what you need and, and your advisors and accountants are good with that stuff? Or are you scrambling just so you can actually get a tax estimate and make your payment when you need to? Um, or are you barely getting things done by the deadline and, and having a lot of stress around that stuff? So I think it's probably a good place to start just to see uh, where, where the room is at with, with this stuff. So be honest, it's anonymous and we can speak to the poll when, uh, when, when we close it, we'll give you about 30 to 45 seconds to answer the question. All right, so how is this? Oh, lots of people that are on time uh, that answered with, with that stuff. I think that's great. Some people who are early scrambling or barely getting things done by the deadline. Hopefully we can help you guys out today or hopefully the people that are right on time, maybe we can figure out how we actually do some of that stuff. Um, you know, maybe a, a bit quicker, maybe it's easier to be right on time or we can move you guys into that world of, of being early. Um, and you know what, we'll, we'll do another one. You know what, how do you guys like bookkeeping and doing that stuff and, and running your business in terms of that stuff? Is that is that something that you love doing? Is it something you say, well, it's necessary, I'll deal with it. Uh, or is it something that just stresses you out and keeps you up at night every time that you have to do it or you just procrastinate um, with that piece? So I don't uh, get get some answers from you guys as well. So feel free to, to contribute to that. So we, we know what kind of stuff we have in the room for just the tone of how we think about bookkeeping. All right, everybody, one person loves it. That's great. Um, maybe you have a second career or at least a seasonal career outside of, of when you're doing stuff on the farm. But I think that's probably the thing everybody says, well, it's 
it is necessary and what that looks like. I think that's probably what we usually hear from our clients. It's necessary. I'll deal with it if I have to. Some people um, absolutely hate it. So hopefully we can we can provide some stuff to you guys today just to think about, well, what can the cloud actually do to potentially help you guys out with that stuff? So um, really for today, we're going to go through some stuff. What's cloud accounting and bookkeeping? You know, how does it work? We'll talk a bit in there about, um, you know, what, what are the steps to potentially getting in there and, and trying to do that stuff to give a bit of, of some parameters around there, at least give you a feel for, you know, what am I getting into if I want to go down this path or, or should I do it all at once or, or just a, a piecemeal at a time? Um, but really, you know, what should you actually consider when it comes to cloud accounting and whether or not it's even the right fit for you? And we'll talk a bit about that stuff at the end and then we'll give some time for some Q&A. Um, so as things come through, any questions that come up, you know, feel free to keep dumping them into the chat uh, so that Quentin can keep compiling them and we can make sure that we have some uh, some questions sitting there and we'll get to them at the end for sure because we've carved out a, a bit of time to be able to have some engagement there. So we will jump into it and really talk about, you know, what is cloud accounting and bookkeeping? Why is it a thing? Um, kind of where does it sit with what that looks like? And really start off by giving a, a bit of stats for what that looks like, probably just I would say across Canada or probably better yet across North America with what that looks like and really where this stuff started to come to is that really when smartphone and tablets really started to exceed PC and desktop sales in 2011 there was some stuff that people had said well you know how do we start potentially helping this out with actually using it as a business tool no different than than anybody on a farm would do that stuff. Um, but then really, as that stuff has started to, to move on and what does that look like today? Well, you know what, by now, roughly 20% of businesses in North America, will they don't own any IT assets. Everything's effectively in the cloud. They're running stuff off of their phone and their tablets, like maybe a computer, you want to call that an IT asset, but uh, people aren't really running with servers and stuff like that. And something that doesn't necessarily apply to farms, but kind of tells you where the trend is going into uh, what people are starting to do and how they're interacting with data and what that looks like is for a lot of businesses, they're thinking like we're seeing stuff that says that, you know what, social media is probably going to start replacing um, email for a lot of business users and what that looks like and how they interact with customers. And we're starting to see this trend towards things becoming online, becoming digital, getting out of the world of paper and just a different way of interacting uh, in the market, whether it's businesses with clients, whether it's accountants with their clients or farmers or with advisors. Uh, in that piece. And, and it's really starting to trend just based on what's happening in the technology world. So really, when we look at this, well, what is cloud accounting? And, and really, it's, um, it, it's, it's really an accounting platform that, that's supposed to make data accessible really anytime, anywhere from any device. If you can connect to the internet, you can connect to whatever platform you're using or software that you're using to be able to actually get this, this stuff done. The idea is that it's stored in the cloud and, and it's kind of seems like in some cases that that's a bit of a black box, um, but really it's not something that's on somebody's desktop anymore. And it's not something that is, um, you know, really in a place where, where you have to be on location to be able to access that stuff. And when we look at that, um, really, I think the idea, it's no different than where does the data go when, when you're sitting there in, in a tractor, you're pulling stuff really off the field and, and stuff's coming off your monitors. And, uh, you know, if you're, if you're sitting in something, especially with John Deere, with where they're sitting in the big data world, you know, where's that stuff getting stored? Well, you know what, these are, these are servers that are sitting, but they're not necessarily sitting in somebody's place. So they're being stored online so that they're easier to access uh, a cheaper and potentially more efficient way of storing data with that stuff, but also something that becomes more accessible. So when we talk about, a, you know, really accounting platforms and what that looks like, where is it done? Um, you know, the, Purdue, the two predominant ones that we would see in industry would be stuff with QuickBooks Online uh, or Zero. Uh, would be the two main ones that they are there. I know that there's some stuff in terms of what that looks like for Ag Expert moving to the cloud. Uh, Sage is putting some stuff into the cloud for what that looks like, but these are probably the two bigger ones that we would see in market for what that stuff looks like. And really the whole piece around this is that it's no longer the idea of, well, do I have to do something in Excel? Do I have to buy something new uh, just to keep things updated or as updates come out? Do I actually have to install them? Do I have to pay for this? This is really subscription-based of essentially saying, I. 
I pay a certain amount per month and I get my cloud accounting platform and whatever the latest features are, they are sitting in there for what that looks like. Um, really, when we talk about cloud accounting as a firm, anything that we talk about usually says that, you know, we look at privacy and security for applications and, and review that stuff. And usually it aligns with our firm standards, but it's becoming more secure um, and it is secure today. And it's becoming more secure as, as time really moves on. And really the idea is that, you know what, if you've done online banking before and logged something into your phone, you already done something in the cloud technically in terms of what that stuff looks like and can actually get a probably have a feel for what that looks like to access your data to be able to make payments have decisions made or being able just to check on where things are at in your bank account uh really from your phone or even how you use things in terms of making payments and stuff like that that stuff's all in the cloud so something that you've been exposed to but maybe not from the perspective of what that looks like for your business and really, when we talk about, you know, the whole reason behind cloud and what that allows us to do, and we talk about the old way behind this, and this might be the piece where uh, most people would say is that, well, what do you do? Well, I go home and I put everything really into my uh, into my computer. So in this case, you know what, the farmer's putting everything into their computer at home and doing stuff when they're not on the field or when they have some downtime to get that stuff done. Uh, and you really come up with a file and then you have to send that file over to your accountant. And now somebody has to convert that file and, and get that data into really the accountant's product that they use so that they can go ahead and do the work to get all the stuff for your business and what that looks like. And there's a lot of steps in there that can become really cumbersome in what's there because it's a matter of saying, well, can I access stuff in real time? Are we, do I have the latest version of my data? If the accountant's made a change, have I got all those changes back into my software and what that actually looks like? And really when we talk about what's the new way of accounting, what's the idea that we wanna have there? And, and really the, the idea behind this from really the holistic point of view is saying that, well, there's one place where financial data and documents get stored. And really whether it's through a phone, a tablet or a computer, that's people accessing or inputting information into that stuff that other somebody else can access from somebody from somewhere else and make those changes. But really we talk about how do we create that single source of truth that exists so that whatever you're looking at, is it the most recent? Is If somebody makes a change, it automatically shows up uh, from the other side with that stuff without having to move stuff back and forth, really ease of access and efficiency in terms of being able to use this. And then also to be able, be able to have collaboration on this because you can end your business and your farm so that you can make sure that you're looking at things at the same time or things that are the most recent without really asking a lot of questions or having to send a lot of information because you're working off of the same system all the time. So really let me talk about, well, that's great that these are great concepts and stuff like that. So what are some of the benefits that sit behind sit behind the cloud and, and what that looks, you know, what that actually looks like? Like, why should this actually be important to you? And we talk about some of the benefits that actually come through. And really, this is just the benefits of the system. Um, you can extrapolate some of these things into the benefits that they hold for you personally. Um, but there's a big thing in here around you don't you can access accounts from anywhere. Uh, most people, if they needed to look up something, it was I have to go home, I have to do this, I have to go find my office. Um, you know, I, I, I can't do anything remotely. And this is really saying, well, you know what, I can be anywhere. If I'm sitting and I'm waiting in line at a grain elevator, can I actually log in and take a look at my stuff just because there's a lot of, there's there's a bit of a backlog there and what that stuff looks like. Or can I take a quick peek at some stuff or do some things, you know, while, while we're actually moving some stuff around in the field or we've had to stop so we can actually either um, get more product into our, our tanks for that stuff or maybe it's at harvest time where you're saying, well, hey, uh, you know what, I, I actually have to stop so I can actually put some stuff into a grain truck directly from my, my combine, what that looks like. So being able to do that anywhere, anytime, um, you know what, or, or maybe that means that if you actually take a bit of a holiday, uh, you can still monitor some of the stuff that's actually happening and potentially you can do it, uh, you know, on the, on the beach with a drink in your hand, as opposed to having to say, well, once I get back, I can deal with that stuff. So maybe it allows you to do that a bit faster. You know, the other piece is it gives you access to real time information. And that's really tied to the piece that we talk about with live bank feeds and what that looks like. And, and what a bank feed is, is effectively that's you connecting your software um, to your bank account. And really what ends up happening is it's pulling in the information that's happening in your bank uh, to be able to get it in there, but also the ability to upload receipts into the into the platform so that you can actually be able to have them sitting in there. And it's it's more relevant information to you. And, and I'll We'll use the word real time with a bit of a grain of salt. Um, real time doesn't mean up to the minute. I think that real time usually says if you can get data or get your information in there and usually you're operating within a month of what has happened actually having it in your system or under a month, 
that's fairly real time compared to what most people have today in what that looks like. So the ability to make sure that, you know, you're looking at something that's more relevant. I don't have to do a bunch of work to get my stuff up to date because it's happening on an ongoing basis. And it's kind of a, a continuous process that you're in to get your stuff up there. It allows you to get a better picture of what things actually look like. Um, you know, we talk about access to an application ecosystem. That's really saying that there's some core pieces that are in there, but as as cloud it gets higher adoption, and probably the one piece that I should mention is today in Canada, cloud adoption is actually at under 15% uh, for what that looks like of all businesses across Canada and in what's in there and how they're running their business. So we talk about the application ecosystem. It's no longer, I have to go buy this large package off the shelf in order to see all of these features, or maybe I have to buy this large package with too many features to actually be able to go and see one thing about the business. Well, as this whole thing around cloud gets higher adoption and there's more things that are coming into the market, that there's actually applications that you can start to attach to your business to help solve some of these needs and what that actually looks like. And so then you can actually say, well, do I need something to help me track inventory when that gets built? And that's a bit shaky right now, but there are some applications that do that. There's other things that help out with reporting and other things in there. And as that ecosystem grows, there's pieces that can actually help you. There's payments applications that actually can tie into there. So you can actually make payments by linking things together for what that looks like. And that's when we talk about connected online payment, but this, this ecosystem that continues to grow to help service certain points and pain points in the business that actually connect within your platform. Like we said before, always working with the latest software. You don't have to pay to upgrade every two or three years or have to use something that's out of date. And really the idea is that it is it is secure data and what that actually looks like and, and what it goes through to make sure that there isn't anything that's, that's out of line with that piece. So um, those are really the benefits. What do these things actually amount to? We'll talk about some of that stuff later, but like the biggest one is, can you get more time? Can you get more time back? Can you spend less time on your bookkeeping? Uh, can you spend less time getting your stuff ready? Can you be more collaborative with your advisor in what that stuff looks like? So can you actually start to do this stuff on a faster basis? Can you do this in real time or at least to have a relevant conversation with your advisors? Can you do this more efficiently just to save yourself more time? And we'll talk about that a bit later in terms of some of the features that exist within cloud accounting um, and, and how you actually use this stuff. But, you know, can you do this stuff faster? Something that took you an hour, can you get it down to 15, 20, 30 minutes and what that looks like and get some of that time back? Uh, so you can spend more time farming and with your family. And really the idea is, is if we can have efficiencies and what this looks like, then instead of spending something that's either mandatory because you have to file your tax return or something that actually exists or that you effectively have to do it just because it's, again, it's the necessary part of your business as we defined at the start, well, that's great. How do we shrink that time so you can spend more time on your farm and working on that piece? Or maybe you don't have to do that. Maybe it just gives you more time to be with your family, maybe to make a softball game or, or get out to the hockey rink or something like that instead of having to worry about uh, crunching numbers. Or maybe it just means that you spend less time at night doing that stuff and you just get more rest and more sleep. So we're going to jump into some stuff really around how does this stuff work? How do we actually pull this stuff together? What's actually happening in here? Uh, and get into a bit of the details around that piece and, and saying, well, how does cloud accounting work? And we'll talk about some stuff in there is like, well, if I want to get into cloud accounting, how do I start actually working through this piece? And, and what's that actually going to look like? Because it, it's going to seem like a lot with the amount of moving parts that exist in there, but there is a way to do this in probably a more effective manner and saying that we can take one step at a time instead of having to rip the Band-Aid off uh, and really take a massive leap into the world of cloud. So before we do that, I wanna get a feel in the room today around, you know, what, what does this look like? What software are we using today to do our, our stuff? Are you, you know, are you working in zero QBO online, the two that we talked about? Are you on desktop? Do you work in Sage? Or are you just putting all your stuff into Excel? Are you using Ag Expert? Or is there some other program that you're actually using to do this stuff? Uh, maybe if you're say other, maybe it's a shoebox. I don't know. And you're just bringing that over to your account. But uh, why don't we take some time, answer what you guys use, and then we can uh, we can keep this thing moving along and talk about, you know, what things work and we'll know where you guys are coming from in terms of what you've seen in the cloud space. Okay, we've got a lot of a lot of Sage users, uh, or more Sage users, not as much activity in this poll with only seven people, but uh, you know, we got 
got some people sitting in the world of, of other, uh, maybe you are the shoe box, maybe you have some other type of system, maybe you're actually running a full ERP as well. Um, maybe that's the, the piece when you actually see some stuff out there, whether, you know, we've heard some stuff around, you know, service or some other platforms that are fairly large and robust in what that looks like. Um, but kind of all, all across the place, but not a lot in terms of actually using an online application. So um, probably gives us a good place of, of what we're jumping into. So I think the first thing that we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about the features of, of cloud accounting and where these off, uh, things actually come from. So the idea in here with cloud accounting and with the applications that you use, there's actually some things around whether it's machine learning or automation. And if you consistently put a certain type of transaction from a certain place to a specific account all the time, these these the technology now starts to suggest what should you be doing with that stuff to make it faster for you because it sees the pattern and what you're doing. Um, there's the other piece around automation rules where you can say, you know what, this bank fee that I get every month, it always goes to bank fees and how I actually code this stuff and what it looks like. So you can actually start to create rules around this stuff so that effectively the program starts to make the entry and you just make sure that nothing is getting missed or that it's getting done correctly by reviewing and clicking an OK button instead of having to key everything in. You know, the idea here, this, this also reads receipts, invoices, um, really this is can I take a picture of a receipt with my phone or if I get a PDF bill from somebody, can I email this into my accounting platform or one of the applications so that it can actually do some, it can actually read it or actually take that data and get it into the right place uh, really through what's called optical character recognition or what's referred to in the industry as OCR. And effectively that means it goes in, it reads the receipt, it pulls out what your taxes are. Uh, so you can get your GST back. It actually says, it actually tells you where the stuff is coming from. Again, when we talk about machine learning and, and rules, you know, if if you always go and you're, you're buying your fuel from the co-op and that's the stuff that's coming in, well, if it knows that, then it can start actually suggesting where that stuff should go so you can just push it into the accounting platform and do that stuff to help you code your transactions faster. What this also does is this is the idea of how do we start getting things into real time? Well, no longer should it be really a stack of papers uh, that are sitting on your desk waiting to get it done. Get the receipt, take the picture, take your 20 to 30 seconds to get that done now. So it's in the system so that's either somebody else, your bookkeeper can process it, or if you're doing the bookkeeping, now it's stored in a place where you can actually go ahead and, and use that stuff and log in and get it done in a quicker fashion. So the idea is how do we compress or get rid of manual tasks that you're doing, or even the idea where we talk about uh, automation of, of saying like, do you have to go and type in an account number every time? Do you have to go and type in, uh, you know, where, where the payment's coming from every time and you're man entering that stuff straight off of your, your bank statement. This allows us to actually get rid of some of that time so you're not sitting in things that are mundane or routine uh, so you can be faster at what you do. So the other piece is, we've talked about this, it's easier for your accountants to start to collaborate with you as a client and be your true advisor and what that is because it allows you to look at things, whether it's your results to date, you know, how does that stuff compare to budget based on what you're, you're seeing and doing that stuff. So that now you can start talking about things that are relevant. It's no longer a, a gut feel that you have to talk to them about or when you need to make a decision, you don't have to spend so much time just getting all the information together so that when you actually need to jump in and talk about problems, you're solving problems as quickly as you can without having to do a bunch of legwork because it should already be done or it could just be as much as, hey, can somebody jump in and take a quick peek at my numbers? There's some things I want to talk about. Your accountant can do that ahead of time. And then you guys can actually start having meaningful conversations instead of having to either catch them up or give them some insight into what's happening. Uh, like we said, huge ecosystem of, of applications that actually exist in there. Um, so you can, you can keep attaching things that maybe you need for your business and what that stuff actually looks like. Um, and then really the idea when we talk about, you know, what's the Easter egg that sits behind here and what's coming down the pipe, um, really it's saying, how do you actually start to connect to more tools uh, and put those things together so you can actually have real-time visibility? So this is not the today's state of where anybody usually starts in the world of cloud accounting. This is what you're building towards over time. And the better things that you have in the cloud today allows you to start to marry that stuff up with the other data that's starting to get 
to get put into the cloud so you can actually put things together and say well now are we actually able to track things around you know can we actually look at cost per acres a lot more effectively or efficiently with what that looks like can you actually um you know being able to track certain crops and what that looks like down the road so you can actually say well what's you know what's my actual profit that i have on this crop this year for what that looks like and being able you know can you actually put fertilizer to a specific crop that you're doing or actually covering what what acres that you have in there and we start talking about you know where is this going in the future and this will be a major feature of cloud accounting um but again it's a tough place to get to if nothing's in the cloud today that's a big leap to try to fill the gaps uh and get there but it's definitely something that uh will be more efficient in the future and just by starting by getting your financial data in there allows this to become an actual reality at some point in time the other thing is nobody likes getting audited by cra or having anybody show up and say hey we need to see some receipts for some stuff uh or if you just need to take a receipt or if your accountant asks you where where's the receipt for this thing um you know in this case when you actually provide the receipt or take the picture or use the pdf um you know what it's actually stored in the cloud. It's sitting in there so that you can access that receipt with that transaction to make find that stuff, you know, a, a lot quicker. And the one thing that we haven't really talked about in here much is that idea behind bank feeds and what that actually means. And we'll talk about how the data flows in, in what that stuff looks like. But I think that the piece that we'll talk about is, you know what, when we start doing this stuff and we say, well, how are we going to jump in here? Or how does this stuff all tie together when you talk about this? So from, from our perspective, these are the applications that we use at MNP in terms of getting this stuff done. So the idea is, is that everything starts with your digital GL. That's the place that we have to get established first. That is the source of truth that everything needs to fit feed into to say that we have all the transactions so we can actually put something out of there. So the idea here is that you know, we talk about stuff with your bank and what that actually looks like. Really, when we talk about those things coming in, instead of saying I have to enter or manually type in like 200 transactions every month to actually get stuff in, and I'm just working through my bank statement to get that stuff up before I actually deal with anything in terms of my accounts receivable or my accounts payable. In this case, that gets imported into your product with what that looks like so that you're actually walking into a to data that just now needs to be coded and put in the right place instead of having to key things. So automatic time savings and what that looks like. And, and that feeds into that digital GL. When we talk about invoices and receipts and taking pictures with things, we do that through Dext. Another one out in the market is HubDoc that's fairly prevalent in what that is, but that's effectively, those are the things that pull the information off and push that into there. And there is some stuff even around timesheets and being able to do payroll on the cloud or being able to do that stuff and make it more efficient in what that actually looks like for calculating payroll, getting your T4s done at the end of the year uh, without having to have tons of spreadsheets and actually being able to make payments just by direct deposit through an application. And one of those would be WagePoint uh, that's out there. That's that's a standalone that people can use for that stuff. Other options would be like things like Payworks and things like that. They're, they're a payroll company and have the piece around an actual virtual environment that you can work in with that stuff, but really some things that, that can help with those efficiencies. But really the piece is, is that when we talk about what do I set up first or how does this work, it's, it's really as simple as saying, well, the first place to start is get your GL set up, start getting your bank transactions into there. That is always the first step on what that looks like. So whether you're trying to do it during the year that's a big thing to do because you're trying to take live data and get it caught up to a certain point and then start in the cloud. Um, not impossible, totally feasible to be able to do that stuff. Or you can do with something at the start of the year and you just have to take your prayer, your trial balance and actually get your numbers into there. But really that's the place to start. Make sure that those things are functioning properly and that you know the basic functions of how to code things within your GL and use your bank to do that stuff. Likely at the time that you start getting those things, you say, yes, this is working properly over like the first month. Well, then we probably want to introduce something around Dex, uh, something to deal with your invoice and receipts so we can start automating things around your payable cycle or even your receivable cycle, whether it's crane tickets for receivables or when you're getting stuff and taking pictures of those, uh, or whether it's just all of your expenses flowing through one place so that those things actually get captured and pushed into that, into your GL so that you can actually get that work done. Um, those are probably, that's, that's the place to start. Biting off more than that brings a lot of extra complexity and can be overwhelming because it's probably overwhelming enough because the cloud operates in a different fashion than what you do on your desktop. But this would be the place to start where we can make it easy for you to actually be able to do that stuff. 
Um, other things that we tie into here, we work with RBC PayEdge on what that looks like. You don't have to be an RBC client, by the way, to use that product, but effectively that's a way of being able to pull out your accounts payable listing from your GL to be able to make payments out to vendors um, effectively through RBC. So it's not going and entering an e-transfer uh, that you have to do or that you have to use a payables module actually sitting in the bank. This is a way to actually pull that stuff out, be able to make your payment through there, be able to do that in bulk. Don't have to write checks. If you're wondering how much a check actually costs you by the time you add up time uh, spent actually putting the check together, doing signatures, doing everything else that needs to be there, you're usually actually looking at like 10 to 15 bucks a check. Uh, depending on what that stuff actually looks like if you put a value on the time that it takes to get that stuff done, plus then mailing that out to wherever it needs to go uh, to do that stuff. And, and so there's some things around page that you can do. Um, and then really the idea is saying, well, how do I get reporting? Both of the GLs with QuickBooks Online and Zero can actually give you the reporting um, you know, that you actually need in there. Zero has something that's probably a bit more robust for reporting that it can spit out for you. But again, we can augment that or you can augment that by having a reporting application that's in there that actually starts to give things in a different view for what that looks like. One of the programs that we use for that would be Spotlight Reporting as an example for what that is. But this is essentially where the data and the idea here is that we're trying to say that there has to be data flow. We're no longer wanting to enter data at different points in time. It needs to flow through the entire system and it has to start up here and what that looks like and start to flow all the way down into your GL and things should be flowing back and forth and what that looks like as opposed to ever once it's entered into the system once it should go to every place that it needs to go that is the concept behind cloud accounting to save you time so when we talk about well what should I actually consider as we're going to start wrapping this stuff up you know, is this actually a, a right fit for me? What am I actually looking at? And, and the pieces that we usually would talk with with anybody that talks to us about this is really saying, well, first question, are your records current? If your records are consistently behind and you're always doing like catch up, almost like sprints of bookkeeping to actually get your stuff caught up whenever you have a filing that's coming up um, or whenever it's getting close to tax time or your accountant makes a call, you know what, maybe this is something to be worth considered. And, and the idea here is that this has to be better than the system that you currently operate in today. There has to be a benefit to take a step forward. If there's something that you're really holding on to that you need that doesn't sit in the cloud um, or your records are currently, they are current and you say, well, I I'm, don't spend a bunch of time on it. I can actually get that stuff. That's great. But if we're not taking a step forward or actually bringing improvement, we're making your life worse by putting you into the cloud. Probably not the best thing. So are your records current? If the answer is yes, okay, let's keep, let's keep moving on. Are you easy? Is it easy to collaborate with your advisor on what you're actually trying to do? Is it easy to get stuff to them? Is, is there a place where they can log in and see where you're at when you actually have stuff available for them? Um, desktop, probably not so much. If you're dealing in Excel, definitely not, not there unless you're really on top of that stuff um, with that. Are you able to use your data ad to actually plan? And if the question is, well, I, I'm actually starting to plan in February, March on a napkin because my books aren't together. Uh, not, not really a great place to be in. So can you actually get this stuff more current so you can start talking about what you want to plan in the future or knowing your results better so that you can actually make business decisions to plan for your next year when harvest is done on what that actually looks like or, or really with anything else. You know, the other piece is, you know, are you ready to engage more in your business? Are you saying, I actually want to know more things about my business. I want the data handy so I can actually make um, decisions on what that looks like. I, I don't just want to rely on my gut. I want to be able to engage with my numbers and, and see what that actually looks like. Probably something that, that can do that for you. You know, is your bookkeeping too stressful? I know that we had one person who just said it keeps me up at night. I don't like doing it. Um, you know, maybe this is a solution and that helps you get some of that stuff because you, you don't want to do it. This is a way to offload it or at least to have the support from your advisor uh, to be working on the same things that when you have trouble, somebody can jump in and help you out. And the other piece is, you know what, do you actually have enough time? Is there something that actually sits in here that says that I, I don't have enough time. And when I do this stuff, it's stressful. It's super late at night. I'm not really good at it. I'm back and forth with my accountant all the time during tax season, trying to clarify what things are. They're cleaning up things. They're making a bunch of journal entries. Well, maybe there's a solution to give you some of that time back and, and do that thing. And I think that today, probably more than ever, people are realizing time is really valuable. How do we squeeze as much time out of our days as possible? Because the days aren't getting longer, but our time seems to be getting shorter and what we actually have to do and the amount of time that we have to get there. One thing that's not listed in this slide that I will point out 
if you are in a program that effectively is managing your inventory today and you're really engaged with it and that stuff is up to date and that's something that you use and rely on, then I would say that you are probably in a position to say, stay there for a bit, let the industry catch up to you and what that looks like for inventory management, because you probably won't be finding a system that's going to be able to replace that off of day one. You're probably gonna feel like you're taking a step back um, unless you have all these other things that say, you know what, I can probably live without it or I have a good enough feel that I don't need to do that. Um, you can, but you have to really be talking with your advisor about that trade-off for what that looks like in, in terms of there. And, and do, does the benefits of these questions outweigh what you want to be able to get out of your system or the system that you're using today? So we're going to pause here before we wrap stuff up for the rest of the presentation. And we're going to go through with Quentin really in terms of any questions that you guys may have had or anything like that. Um, so we can talk through a couple of things and, and see if there's anything that you guys that came up through there. But really, I think that the piece, the piece really that we stress here is saying, you know what, is there a right fit in what this looks like? Do you just want to explore this more? This is not asking somebody to make a decision, but are you, has this sparked enough curiosity that you're willing to have a discussion with someone to see what the next steps could be, or if this is truly the right fit for you? Yeah, uh, thanks a lot, Shane. That was that was great. Um, I guess we got one more poll here. We'll get we'll get some answers there, and then we can kind of dive into a Q and A period. I, I thought the the features of cloud was awesome there. Um, yeah, and if anybody from the audience has any more questions, feel free to type them into that questions tab right now, and we can uh, we can get started on that. So the first one, um, I guess, is probably a pretty standard one, but uh, is this safe? Yeah. Is this safe? I would say that if you probably round, rewound the clock maybe three, four years ago, uh, you'd probably say, well, probably a bit touch and go on what that looks like. I think also the landscape has changed and what sits out there when we probably hear more about cyber attacks and what that stuff actually looks like. There is a major shift in the industry right now to making sure that stuff is secure. I think that when we talk about what people's financial data actually means to them, uh, when you probably talk to people saying, what's the most valuable things that, that you have or what are like the most personal things that actually exist, it probably has to do with a relationship within your family with what that looks like, but also your money and what that is. So um, security has been beefed up. There's certain requirements that are starting to, to come out there where it's not necessarily legislated, but best in practice suggest that somebody should be what we refer to as like SOC 2 compliant, which really just means that the process is very secure in what that looks like. Um, and it is secure and safe. It's just really a piece of, and it's starting to get even more in the industry because it's being demanded by clients and people aren't taking it on because they've heard too many probably horror stories of what that actually looks like. So today it is very safe and is a place that we would say, well, it's as safe as having it on your computer at home, uh, if not safer, because there's probably more security in the cloud than there is in the internet that actually feeds into your house and the computer that you have. Cool. Um, next one, I guess this is probably the next most common question, but cost range. Um, what's the cost and then what's the cost range versus desktop? Yeah, when we talk about cost, I, I think that that depends on, on the needs. There's usually different things that actually sit in there. So when we talk about, you know, what that looks like or, or what we would do with, with a firm, I mean, you you can say that you're, you know, you're anywhere in, in the range of, uh, of probably like 30 to 70 bucks a month for the, the GL and what that actually looks like in, in terms of what's there. Um, with the cost, I, I think that the other piece is that, you know, you're not paying it, you're, it's also from a cash flow perspective, you pay for that stuff monthly. You're not paying for it like a lump sum of, hey, I need to shell out like another two or 300 bucks to upgrade my stuff. Um, you know, when we look at the, the piece around cost, I think the one thing to always consider is, sure, there might be an additional cost that that is in there, we need to talk about time savings and what is your time actually worth, not in physical dollars, but what is it actually worth to you to say, is there a benefit that outweighs that stuff? Because there's going to be more probably a cost that exists in managing your accounting system um, through the cloud because it is monthly subscription based. But the idea here is if I get my time back, if I can be faster at this and I can go make other changes within my farm to get more incremental value, then it pays for itself and what that stuff looks like. So usually cost can be a tricky question. Yes, it's more expensive, but the question is, is it worth it in terms of the benefit it's going to provide you? Well, I think you answered both these, but just a couple more came through. Like the, I'm currently using Sage desktop. Are there any other savings in addition to potential time savings? So I think we, I think we touched on those. Um, another good one is how does this handle inventory? I think you touched on that at the end of your presentation there, but maybe just, maybe just follow back up to it. Yeah. So we'll understand that cloud accounting is still in the world of its, I would say it's, I would consider it to be within its infancy versus other things that exist just based on 
Um, really, if we talk about saying, well, where's the leaders in cloud accounting today? Um, you know, they exist in Australia. They are five to seven years ahead of us. So understand that when we go, somebody goes into a new market, you're going to go for the lowest hanging fruit. That's the easiest thing to build. Inventory is a complex beast to deal with in terms of being able to track stuff and what that stuff looks like. So today for tracking inventory in the cloud, um, I would say not not great in terms of being able to have real time stuff and, and nobody has figured out the way within the ecosystem of how do we start pulling stuff in when you have information coming off of a cart and what that looks like when you talk about what that looks like for being calibrated and what's there um you know with that stuff i think probably the place where we talk about from an inventory perspective where there is a um, you know, where there's an advantage is the, the fact that when you are actually either buying things or when you're actually taking pictures of stuff, you know, at, at least some, at least we have an ability to go back to some of those receipts for what that looks like to be able to pull that information and actually start to track it. Um, inventory is the big question that we keep asking around the firm of how do we track this better? What does that look like? Do we need to actually uh, be working on developing some of our own things for what that is? But today, inventory isn't great. Part of it's because there's either not enough information in the system or people haven't been on the cloud long enough, or you really just are at a point where you say, well, let's figure out the basics and get good at those things before we start adding the complexity of inventory, even though it is a very important part of what farms actually do and how they run that stuff. So that, that'd be a piece to also, I think, look at for, for that stuff. But inventory, I would say, is it's going to get better. It will be forced. But today, it's probably saying that the basics are getting taken care of before the inventory and the complexities of that really start taking off. Well, and I think with that, I mean, with that answer, I think we answered a few of the other ones that are here, but other one, is it hard to switch on for the cloud? Um, yeah, is it is it hard? I, I would tell you it's not easy. Um, if it was easy, everyone would be moving to the cloud, no problem, because I think the benefits are really there and what that looks like. I think it's about when you move on to the cloud of understanding that there's probably going to be a little bit of growing pains to get things really dialed in. And usually we would say that just in getting the system to function properly right now, um, most people would say your average time of getting some, getting people onboarded and getting through that stuff, um, you're, you're really probably saying that it's three months until you have it dialed in if you're doing it well. Um, but it's really dependent on what that effort looks like from both accountant and the client and what's there to get things moving. But usually three to six months is the window that we usually would probably see based on averages of just, well, how long does it take to get this thing really humming along so that the process is really dialed in? and. Um, you know, with that piece. But at the end of the day, I wouldn't say that it's like so hard and so complex because we try to give it out in bite-sized pieces as the firm when we would do this stuff to make sure that it's digestible and let's get you really good at something before we tack on additional things. The more things you add, it's complexity. So, you know, is it hard? It can be easy. It probably just means that your pace is a bit slower. The faster you accelerate your pace of adoption and the amount of applications you try to attach and the more processes that you try to do, if you do it all at once, I think no different than with anything else that just makes things harder and more complex. So I think it's probably saying going at a pace that you can keep up with for what that looks like can keep it probably into, you know, a, a bit of that easy to medium range as opposed to being overly hard. Um, but again, it, this isn't the easy button where you do it once and now you take your hands off and it, it, does it, it does the work for you forever. There's still some effort that has to come in, but it's just a different process that you have to learn and, and adapt to and what that looks like. I guess to kind of bounce off that too, is there, is there a perfect time that you think, so someone's sitting down with you and say, hey, I want to start this, we should start this at this month or this time frame in the year? Yeah, I would say that if somebody's going to do something mid-year, I would say don't do it in the middle of like a busy time where you're going to be having a ton of transactions firing through your bank account for what that looks like. Um, usually because there, there's just some pieces around what that is. We've done mid-year conversions before. There's a bit more complexity there because you're trying to say, how are we picking up the information from the old system, getting it into the new one and catching everything up so we can start moving forward um, for what that looks like without having to redo all the work. Um, really, I would say that the optimal time is that if somebody said, well, what's the easiest date to switch? It's usually the day, the day your next year starts um, from a fiscal perspective because at that point, you know you have a clean cutoff. It's it's natural just in what's actually happening and what you're kind of working towards. But I would say that like that would probably be the easiest time. I, I would say the optimal time probably depends on uh, likely on on how on how many pain points you have with your current way you do your accounting. If I mean if you're overwhelmed by it and it's not good, I would say then the right time is now to do that stuff or at least start looking into it. If things are manageable and you say I'm just looking for a clean cutoff so I can start something different, 
cool, let's talk about how we get stuff in for your, your next year. And I think that the great thing is when we probably see a lot of farmers and what that looks like across our firm, you would say that a lot of people have a year of like December 31st. Mm -hmm. There's not much happening in that first couple of months in terms of what that looks like, because everybody's already spent their money on buying inputs, making sure they've done all their tax planning, if they need to get some tax numbers down, buying equipment and doing all those things. And then really over the point of that January to March period, you have time to catch up, get your stuff into your accountant and starting to take that stuff on because there's not a lot of transactions. So it also gives you a bit of buffer to get your stuff in there so you can actually be ready that once you, you know, once you start firing up operations again to get back in the field for what that looks like, probably that's everything is up and on board and what that is. And now it's just a matter of getting that process, getting, getting your process to handle the volume of transactions that you go through on a monthly basis. I'm just gonna, got, got a little bit of a longer one here. So let me just read through it. Um, but I guess we can kind of go into one of the last ones here. Once I'm on the cloud, do I get to take my hands off the wheel? <laughs> Probably, uh, I think that, that that's a bit of an it depends. So somebody still has to feed the information into your accountant if they're doing, or your bookkeeper if they're doing that stuff for you. So um, will it mean less time on taking your hands off the wheel? The answer would probably be yes. We probably can reduce your time. Um, if you are not engaged with your bookkeeper on what you're doing, I can tell you what the results are going to be with any process. If you just totally take your hands off the wheel, it probably just means that you don't have to be as engaged because some of the stuff will be automated for you and what that looks like, but you still need someone, you still need to be on the end of saying, hey, sometimes your, your role is now instead of saying, I have to I have to go and actually take this pile of receipts to a physical place. Well, I got it. I took a picture. It sent it into the system. I'm done. Like your role maybe is over at that point where your, your bookkeeper can effectively take over from there. So maybe it's less time, less, less time being engaged with that stuff because some stuff starts getting automated, but um, you can't automate the entire thing because if you could, then effectively you, you probably would suggest that everything is very simple and straightforward. And just in the case of business, it's usually not. So I would say that less time on the wheel, but not nearly as much time as you probably used to have to have in the process. Gotcha. Another one popped in here too. Um, what about, so are there accounting systems that better cater to livestock operations and additional to crops? Yeah, from a livestock perspective, um, you know, I, I would say that livestock is a bit more tricky. I would say that there's probably things that just need to get Canadianized, right? We talked about you know, Australia, New Zealand kind of being the, the grand or the, the forefathers of, of cloud accounting and the way that it's actually been built. Um, you know, understanding that uh, that New Zealand is, is really big into what that looks like for, for dairy and livestock and stuff like that based on what they actually have. Uh, the accounting systems that we probably would say when you start seeing some of that stuff come up, um, you know, I'd probably be saying that, that zero is the place to start, partly for your reporting, but also because it, it was born in New Zealand. Um, and you know what, what that actually looks like for that functionality. But at the same time, most accounting platforms, you can, um, if you have a good cloud, cloud accounting platform, it probably comes back more so to your world of, of what kind of process do you have. Functionally, they do all very similar things. Um, probably some different stuff in terms of how the program is built um, with that piece. But I think that what we're starting to see is there's a lot more places in the ag world that are starting to build integrations to connect to zero to help manage those pieces as opposed to QBO. And that's just because of zero's experience in this space. Gotcha. Um, we got a few more chats here, but I think some of these might be better suited to just reach out to Shane directly. So I think if you want to pop up your email there, Shane, if you got on a slider, I can I can read it out here. Uh, that's kind of all we got for questions right now, unless anybody else has any last minute ones. So yeah, following this webinar, you'll be receiving a short three questions anonymous survey. I would really appreciate it if anybody that attended could uh, could jump or could answer that quickly for us. And then yeah, thanks for tuning into today's webinar. Don't and don't forget to visit topcropmanager.com slash webinars to view all of our recording recorded webinars and to register for the upcoming ones. Thanks again, Shane. I really appreciate it.